by David Jeremiah, and it's called After the Rapture. And so it's written to people who will be left at the point of the rapture. And he's writing to them, telling them what to expect during the next seven years. And it's a wonderful book. Um, so we'll be studying some of these things, and we are studying some of these things. So you might want to get this book. It's called After the Rapture by David Jeremiah. Can you pass this back, straight back to Kirk and then to Terry? Thank you. Now, if you read Jeremiah 50, I tried to ask most of you if you read Jeremiah 50. Um, and if you didn't get a sticker because you read Jeremiah 50, be sure and come up after class and get one, okay? Because it's important to have your stickers. I always think of Liz when I pass out stickers. She, in her Bible, you have the same Bible, Liz? You used to have it just filled up with stickers that you earned in this class. And then somebody said one time, I'm not coming back. This is too much like a second grade class. And I said, well, I'm a second grade teacher. You know, I mean, that's just the way it works. So if you read Jeremiah 50, please come and get your sticker. Listen very carefully. This is who we are right here. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Isn't that beautiful? Now today we are studying page 251. So you throw away last week's page. Do not tell Jerry Wooten that I threw it away, okay? Because he's very, very careful with our ink. So uh, we throw it away. And we're going to use the new one today. And uh, I, I've revised it. I had some mistakes on it. We have a new page, 251. And you're, this is Chase, by the way. Turn around, Chase, and say hello to people. Hello. Everybody say hi to Chase. Hi, Chase. He has a new job this morning. We have been hearing from people from around the country, literally, um, that want to see our class. So he's panning our class for the next few weeks. So I have a friend. We, find some gold in that <laughs> uh, we have a friend named Muriel Horton. She's John Horton's mom. She's in Illinois, I think, or somewhere. And she's listening to our video. And um, Mary Branton, right here in Oklahoma City who is listening to our videos because she goes to church, to her church at this time. And I have several other friends that we're going to be saying hello to around the country. And it's Chase's fault. Chase, thank you. Is everybody smiling? Chase, review that, and if it doesn't look good, do it again, all right? All right. So your page 251 is at the top. At the top of the left-hand side is the map. You should have a map at the top left, okay? By the way, real quickly, I was reading the newspaper this week, um, Thursdays, and this was an article in the Oklahoman. It said, notice the invisible man in the sanctuary. Do you ever go places and feel invisible? I do, and it really hurts my feelings, so I start talking because I don't like being invisible, right? Mm -hmm. But when I go to church sometimes, to a new church, and if I don't speak to people, they don't speak to me. It's like I'm invisible. Or I go to a restaurant. Or I go to Dillard's. And I have money that I'm waving around. And, and I'm invisible. So it says to be careful in the church. And here's what I want to encourage you. I want you to be like Alice and Keita and Dale and many others in here. You speak to people around you in church. Speak to people. You will find people who are scared to speak to you. And they feel invisible. We don't want that to happen. And we want people to know that we are here for them. And speak to them and invite them to class. And invite them to your home. Because we have the gift of hospitality in this church. Invite people out to lunch today. Because we have the gift of of serving the gift of hospitality that Lyndon is talking about. So anyway, let's go ahead. How many of you have read Jeremiah 50? Raise your hand if you have. Oh, I am so glad. This week I want you to read Jeremiah 50 and 51, okay? So give yourself plenty of time because they are long chapters. And as we study Revelation 18, you're going to find that John quotes Jeremiah 50 and 51. Because it is the same events that are happening. 
So be sure and look for the comparisons in John in Jeremiah 50 and 51 with Revelation 18. So today it's Babylon the Great is fallen. And this is a very, very interesting chapter because we are talking about a literal city that will be rebuilt during the tribulation. Saddam Hussein tried to rebuild it, but it, he wasn't successful at it. But as he was excavating the old Babylon, he found many bricks that were directly from uh, Nebuchadnezzar. It said the Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And he found many of those bricks. And so he made many bricks himself. And it said, Saddam Hussein, king of Iraq. So this will be a rebuilt city. So look at your newsletter, if you would. And there I have some notes on there. Because, you know, I cheat. I try to get all my notes on one page. And if I can't, I put it on the newsletter. So don't ever throw away your newsletters if it has notes on them, okay? So we're looking at Babylon. Remember, we studied chapter 17. That was talking about the spiritual Babylon, the, the false church, the false religion that will be occurring during the Great Tribulation. And it will be destroyed by the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the Antichrist is building his capital city called Babylon. In the Bible, we find that when it talks about Babylon, it is often contrasted with the holy city of what? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So in, in, in um, a Revelation, we see the destruction of the wicked Babylon and the rebuilding of and coming down from heaven of the new Jerusalem. So it's contrasted with Jerusalem. Babylon, we're going to find, was a very proud, arrogant city. What is God's number one hate? What does God hate the worst? Pride. He hates pride. What caused Satan to fall? Pride. Here we have Babylon, very proud, a very proud, arrogant city. And yet God says Jerusalem is his chosen city. God chose Jerusalem to be his city where he would reside. Isn't that wonderful? Number two, Babylon was a, will be a wicked city. And if you read Daniel, you will find how wicked Babylon, the original city was. You read Jeremiah, Nebuchadnezzar, all of those. Very wicked city, but it's contrasted with Jerusalem. What was it? The holy city. In fact, you will call Jerus read about Jerusalem being the holy city. And I'm sorry about this over here. Number three, Babylon will be utterly destroyed in chapter 18 of Revelation. When you want to read about the destruction of the commercial Babylon, the wicked, wicked city of the tribulation, it will be utterly destroyed. And Jerusalem will do what? Last forever and ever. So that's what we're going to be reading about so read Jeremiah 50 and 51, and then later we'll read Isaiah 13. All righty? Now, that's regarding the destruction of the Babylon, of Babylon. Now, in Jeremiah 50 and 51, you will be reading about two Babylons. The current Babylon that Nebuchadnezzar lived in, that captured Judah, that destroyed Jerusalem, that destroyed the temple. You'll be reading about the fall of that Babylon. You will also be reading about a future destruction of a future Babylon. And it is very hard to distinguish between what is current with Jeremiah and what is future. So as you study it, see if you can figure those out. Uh, they were the prophecy of the destruction or the defeat of the first Babylon in Jeremiah, when was that fulfilled? When was Babylon defeated according to to the prophecy of Jeremiah. Daniel 5. Who said that? Oh. 
Man, I got a good class. <laughs> Daniel 5. So Daniel 5 is the chapter of the writing on the wall. When, Neb when Nebuchadnezzar's grandson uh, saw that writing on the wall and Daniel told him, tonight you will die. Tonight the Persians are coming in and are going to capture your city. It's called the writing on the wall, Marley and Logan. I'm so glad you're here. So have your folks today read you Daniel 5. It's a very interesting chapter. All right. They're partially fulfilled in Daniel 5 in 539 B.C. by the Medes and the Persians. Jeremiah 50 says that Babylon will be destroyed by a coalition of nations from the north. And you look at the map during this time and it was the Medes and the Persians and Cyrus the Great. And then they will be completely fulfilled in the far future. And that's what we're going to be reading about today in Revelation chapter 18. So do you understand why I want you to read Jeremiah 50 and 51? It shows the, few, the past prophecies of the fall of Babylon and it shows a future total destruction of Babylon. What chapters will you read about the fall of Babylon? Both of them. Say Jeremiah 50 and 51. And what chapter are you going to read in the Bible about the final utterly total destruction of Babylon. Revelation 18. And that's page 251. So if you would look at your map, I show you a picture of the country in which Babylon, if it were there today, would be located. Which country would we find Babylon? Iraq. Iraq. And it's just a few miles south of Baghdad, the capital city of Iraq today. And um, if you look at this map, you'll see Iraq, and then just east of it, you see Iran. And then way over here, you'll find Israel and the Mediterranean Sea. Israel is just a tiny, tiny, tiny little spot on this map compared to Iraq and Iran. So, during the tribulation, um, Babylon will be rebuilt, according to most scholars. Otherwise, how will it become a commercial city again, right? And it will become the world's political and economic capital city of the world. We think Rome will be the re city of the, um, of the false religion. Babylon will be rebuilt, according to most scholars, and the Antichrist will put his government capital there and his economic capital of the world in Babylon. So it will be a literal city. A literal city. And it's about 85 miles south of modern day Baghdad in which country? Iraq. Iraq. How many of you knew that? Good. We need to know that. Um, in Iraq. And so that's page 251, Roman numeral 2, up at the top. What is chapter 18 of Revelation about? The destruction of the economic and political Babylon. Political and economic. Where is Babylon going to be? It will be a literal city south of modern day what? Baghdad. Baghdad in which nation? Iraq. Now I want you to see what, Bag what uh, Babylon will be and its purpose. During the tribulation, Babylon will be the worldwide center of trade. And as we read chapter 18, you will see that. The center of trade. The government center. And it will be the economic center. So when we have a worldwide religion, it will be more than likely centered in Rome. The worldwide government will be centered in Babylon. The mark of the beast and the worldwide economy will more than likely be centered in Babylon. Listen carefully. Many scholars don't agree with me. I'm not teaching these facts right here as truth. Okay? 
as total absolute truth. There's not a lot of agreement on it, but I'm just giving you now an idea of what will be happening. Okay? So, um, the nations of the world will, according to the scriptures, be intoxicated by Babylon's wealth and prosperity. What does it mean if a nation is intoxicated by prosperity and wealth and luxuries? And I'm going to let my Logan answer it. Everybody say hi to Logan. Hello, Logan. Hey, Logan, what year are you in school? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. And what grade is your brother in? Fourth grade. Everybody say hi to Marley. I love these boys. Okay, Logan, I forgot my question. <laughs> it, it's what does intoxicated oh. by wealth and prosperity. Then what does it mean that nations will be intoxicated by the wealth and prosperity and the luxuries of Babylon? What would that mean? It basically means drunken with power. Yes, exactly right. Give him a hand. Yes. He says they are as if they were drunk with power. And it is, isn't it? As if they were drunk with a desire to have those goods. They, it's like they're drunk in their need and their desire for these good things. In fact, they're willing to do anything to get it, aren't they? All right, so that's what it would mean that they're intoxicated. And that's number two on letter A. Got, got the answers? Anybody need, need them? What did I say? Uh, entertainment, yes. Kind of like, kind of like New York City and Los Angeles. Very wealthy, very powerful, and that's where there's seed of it. Of it's very. With that comes entertainment. Not very good entertainment either. You're going to find that this is wicked entertainment. So thank you for helping me. I did want that. Has everybody got that word entertainment? Mm -hmm. All righty. Okay. When are these events going to happen? When will this Babylon be rebuilt and when will it become this powerful capital city? Well, according to the scriptures, now this is interesting, um, the sudden and complete destruction of Babylon will occur at the end of the seven year tribulation. Alright? It will occur then and after the events of the seventh bowl judgment. We read about the seven bowls of judgment. But I'm going to read to you the seventh bowl again because it gives you an idea of what's happening in the world. So let's look at Revelation chapter 16. Open your Bibles to that chapter. It may be on the overhead. I don't know, but I always want you to read your Bible. Romans chapter 6, I mean Revelation chapter 16. Now what it's talking about on the bowls of judgment. There have been the, the seals judgment, the trumpet judgments. Here we have the seven bowls. And as each series of judgments comes along, they become more severe, more horrific. And now we're at the seventh bowl. And it is a very, very horrific time. So this is chapter 16. And right after this, right after these bold judgments, is when Babylon was going to be destroyed. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. And out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne. Now whenever you see in the book of Revelation, God's throne. And we read about it all the way through Revelation. When you see that, it's always depicting judgment, not mercy. From God's judgment comes from his throne when he's acting as judge. So here we have a loud voice from the throne saying, It, meaning God's judgment, is done. What did Jesus say on the cross? What were his last words? It is finished. It is finished. It's done. I've completed the work. Here from the throne, God is saying, my judgment is done. Whoa. What a terrible time it's been. And at the closing of his judgment, it becomes even worse. It's done. Then there came flashes of lightning rumblings, 
peals of thunder and a severe earthquake. No earthquake, according to this chapter, has ever occurred ever and nor will it ever happen again since mankind has been on earth. There's never been an earthquake. There will never have been an earthquake like this. Why? Because it's worldwide. A worldwide earthquake. So tremendous was the quake. The great city. And whenever the scriptures say, you've got to just always read these, this book of Revelation, understanding the terminology. When it refers to the great city, the holy city, the city of God, it's always referring to what city? Is it cold in here? Yes. <laughs> Can you turn it up one degree? I just turned it down one degree. All right. Well, we girls have to have our thermostats here. Now, look what happened in this earthquake. The city of Jerusalem split into three parts. We're going to read about that in Zechariah, by the way. Don't forget that. What, what book are we going to read about that? Zechariah. And the cities of the nations collapsed. Can you imagine? God then remembered Babylon the Great and gave her the cup. When we read about the cup, it's generally full of sins. And he said he gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. I've just been reading a book that Kayleen gave me and how we need to really understand the attributes of God. One of the abominable things that you and I as a Christian could do is to belittle the character of God. All right? I heard somebody just this week talk about the man upstairs. When we do that, what does that say about our God? How demeaning is that? The man. First of all, he's not a man. Second of all, he's not upstairs. He is a holy, powerful, loving, and judgmental God. And we must be careful as we worship him, that we worship him in understanding who he is. Is that what I'm supposed to get from that book, Kayleen? And look. Our God is a wrathful God. Today, He is a God of mercy. But He never changes. At some point in time, His wrath will come about. And we don't want to be there. And we won't be there if we are believers. Because God is going to remember Babylon. And He's going to fill that cup with the fury of His wrath. Let's read on. Look what else happened. In this great earthquake, no more islands. Now, how could that be? No more islands. They fled away. And the mountains could not be found. What happened to the earth in this horrendous earthquake? It destroyed itself. Yeah, it just fell in, didn't it? The mountains flattened. The islands are gone. You, couldn't, you have no more points of reference in your, on your maps. So the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about 100 pounds. Where's Micah? There's Micah. Micah taught us several times about these, about these hailstones. Said that they could be as big as a car. I was saying that they'll do as much damage as a car going 23 miles an hour. Falling out of the sky. So you just let your car fall out of the sky at 23 miles an hour and it lands on your house. That's how bad and big and ferocious these hailstones and destructive will be. What? And lots of them. The whole earth. The whole earth is filled with these hailstones. All of this is happening during that seventh bowl. Okay? That's why I'm reading this. All of this has happened during the seventh bowl and then Babylon will be destroyed. Uh, it fell on people. Whoa! That squashed you, wouldn't it? We don't even want to ask Logan about that. You think it would squash a person, Logan? Turn them into jelly. All right. They cursed. Now look what the people did. 
Look at the response of the people. I would say, surely they will repent. Wouldn't you say? But we've read over and over. We feel surely the people will repent. But what did they do? They cursed God. They cursed God on account of the plague of hail because the plague was so terrible. Now that's number three on your notes. Uh, when does this destruction of, Jerusalem, of Babylon occur? At the end of the seven year tribulation and after the events of the horrific what? Seventh, Seventh bowl. bowl judgment. Now, now the one thing Kathleen yes, ma'am. saying is, I mean, if people would, like we did, you know, read the Bible and try to understand it, they'll know ahead of time and it's like, okay. During the tribulation? Yes. That's why we're going to keep our God notes. Says. Okay, here's what you do. We know we're leaving in the rapture. So leave your notes where people can find them. Honestly, leave these notes out somewhere so that people can find them because they will be reading and the Bible and they're going to need someone to help them. Exactly. Furthermore, there will be 144,000 Jewish witnesses, all evangelists all over the world. So there will be angels flying around the earth telling people to repent that Babylon is going to fall. Don't take the mark of the beast. There will be all kinds of warnings to the people. Except that's one meaning. Yes. All kinds of warnings to the people. Why? Because God is merciful. He is not willing that anybody should perish. He didn't want anybody to perish. But what do they do? They curse him. Have they heard the testimonies of the evangelists? Yes. Have they heard the testimony of the two witnesses and of the angels? Yes. Have they read our Bibles and our notes? Yes. Because you see, we're not taking our Bibles with us, are we? Okay. So now they wouldn't be fair they wouldn't curse him if they saw You would think so, wouldn't you? But let me ask you this. Today we have the Bible on the radio, we have churches on every corner, and people still curse God. Today, in his day of mercy. Alright, good good thinking. So Let's look at the economic Babylon. Let's just see what it's like. And this is number, letter B, Revelation 18. I'm going to read to you the description in Revelation 18 of economic Babylon. Now listen carefully. Today I'm just giving you an overview of chapter 18. I'm telling you where we're going. Then starting next week we'll do it verse by verse if you'll go with me. Do you want to? All right, so let's look at the overview now. And I'm going to tell you about economic Babylon. Okay, this is chapter 18. So open your Bibles to that. And we're going to read verses 12 and 13 and 24. You ready? You like this, don't you, Kathy? Okay. The merchants. Remember, this is the center of trade. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over Babylon because no one buys their cargoes anymore. We're going to find out why. Because it's been destroyed. In fact, the scriptures are going to tell us that it will be destroyed in one day. In fact, it tells us in one hour. Something cataclysmic can destroy this whole city in one hour. What do we have in our nation today that could destroy a whole city in an hour. Bombs. bombs. That's right. Nuclear bombs. Is that right? So what they would be? Okay. So no one buys their cargoes anymore. And let's read this. Let's look at the cargoes. Verse 12. Cargoes of gold and silver. I'm going to read it out of my book here so I don't have to look up there. Um, gold and silver. Precious stones and pearls. Fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth. These are what wealthy people wear. Every sort of citron wood. Citron wood is what they made their very, very expensive furniture out of. Articles of every kind of ivory. You can go into some of these cities today, the 
excavator, the archaeologists are excavating these areas, especially even in Israel, and they're finding beautiful, beautiful furniture just crowned with ivory. Uh, every kind of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble. This sounds like something we'd like to have in our house, doesn't it? Cargos, here's their food. Very, very rare. Cinnamon and spices, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour. They had very coarse flour, and the poorest of the poor had no flour at all. These had fine processed flour, I guess. And wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses, beautiful cars, and carriages, human beings sold as slaves. Yes, Lyndon. Notice the last thing in the list, the least important, the least valuable, was the human soul. That's what. Uh, yeah, the souls of humans. That's very interesting, Lyndon. The priority there because the gold and the silver are at the very top, weren't they? The Precious stones. Do what? Instead of the souls. And souls at the very bottom. Human beings sold as slaves. Sex slaves. Trafficking of people. Look at verse 24. In Babylon was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. Now, why is it that it would say that in Babylon is the blood of all the prophets? Because they really, so most of them were not killed in Babylon. A lot of them were. But why would it say in Babylon we will find all the blood of the prophets and God's people and all of those who've been slaughtered on the earth? Why would we say that? Center. It's the center of, of sin. Babylon has always been the picture of of sin, always the picture of a rejection of God, of persecution of God's people, and in that spirit, Babylon, and found in her, is the blood of all of God's people who've been martyred. Lyndon. There's a new movie out. I can't hear you, babe. There's a new movie out called Babylon. And I've talked to some people who've seen it, and they said it's so corrupt and so. Uh, of what Babylon can be like, yeah. really, because yeah. they got their probably got their description from the Bible. Yeah. Okay, and when you read Jeremiah fifty and fifty one, you will see the same kind of descriptors of this city. Like our Vegas, the same city. <laughs> Vegas there. All right. Okay. Now look at number one. I like this word unprecedented. You hear it on the news all the time. Everything's unprecedented today, isn't it? But uh, it, this truly will be an unprecedented city of wealth. There will be no city more wealthy than this Babylon and luxury. It is a city, it will be a city of unprecedented evil. Because they will, I will be reading some of the descriptions of what they do and the worship of idols and demon, demonology and witchcraft and slavery. Unprecedented evil with its sex traffic and, and slavery. And finally, the blood of the, all the martyrs on the earth is found in this city. And that's number three. Any questions? Are you getting a picture of this Babylon? Now let's look at letter C. There are at least seven dreadful sins of this city of Babylon given to us in the book of Revelation. So we're going to start, and I've got them up here. Um, number one is chapter 18, verse 7. And we've talked about this. She is a city of pride and arrogance and how God dislikes how God it's the script Proverbs tells us God hates six things and then it says no not six seven, seven. that's why I was right to you I'm going to give you two things well maybe three Proverbs says God hates six things no seven 
And the first thing that God hates is pride. And let's read about this city. Let's look at her arrogance as this city refers to itself. This is chapter 7 and 8. God says, give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. That's how much she's going to reap what she sows. All the luxury that she had, she will reap that much grief. Look what she boasts in her heart. In her heart. Now when we talk about a heart, that is our innermost being. That's who we are. And it says from our mouth comes the things that are in our heart, right? So look at her heart. She will boast, I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow. I will never mourn. What is she saying? She has a cold heart. A cold heart. She's impregnable. Nobody can overtake Babylon. And it will be true, no country, no nation or person could conquer this city of Babylon. She considers herself, un, you know, totally safe. Un, uh, yeah, she cannot approach her, cannot know what she will never mourn. Let's, so she's boastful. Number two, we find that she oppressed Israel and God's people. And we just read that verse, 1824, oppression of Israel and all of God's people. In her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, all who have been slaughtered on the earth. This is the martyrs that Kayleen was telling us about. So she is proudful, boastful, and an oppressor of God's people. Number three, Revelation 18. She is a, we just read this verses also. This is the verse that lists all of the cargo. She is a lover of luxuries, a lover of pleasures, physical as well as um, spiritual, and a lover of sin. We found that in those verses that we just read earlier. She's evil. It's an evil city. Number four, she is guilty of idol worship. Now I'm going to read a couple of verses to you, but if you look at Revela number four, I've given you one, two, three, four, four passages to read just from the book of Revelation regarding Babylon's idol worship. What does God consider idol worship to be? What's the word he uses throughout the Old Testament and Revelation? Witchcraft? No, not, no. Adultery. Adultery. Did you say that? Adultery. Adultery. Why would God consider idol worship adultery? Unfaithfulness. It's unfaithfulness. God made it, or Israel agreed with the covenant that God gave them. And they said, we will do these things. We will be faithful. We will not worship other idols. We will not make any image to worship. We will not tell our children or allow our children to marry unbelievers. Mm -hmm. These are the things they promised to do. And Israel broke every one of the covenants or the rules that, that God had made with them under this covenant. And he called it adultery. All right. So here we see idol worship. Look at the verse in 9, verses 20 and 21. They did not stop worshiping demons. Look how wicked this city is going to be. They didn't stop worshiping demons. I don't even know what that means. They had, did not stop worshiping their idols of gold and silver, bronze, stone, and wood. They would not quit worshiping these false things that they had made. They wouldn't stop worshiping the idols that can't even see or hear or walk. Why would you put up a stone idol on your mantle and worship it? It can't see you, it can't hear you, it can't walk, it can't respond to anything, but they would not stop worshiping them. That is called being intoxicated with these idols and with that kind of worship. Uh, they did not repent of their murders. Mary, they didn't repent. Therefore, their heart could not stop cursing God. 
Repent means to turn around and get away from the things that are separating you from God. They wouldn't repent of their murders. They didn't repent of their magic arts, which is witchcraft, magic, all the things that we've talked about in here. They didn't repent of that. They didn't repent of their sexual immorality, of marrying a person of the same sex, of having sex with everybody, or wh whatever all of this immorality is. They refused to repent and to change. And they refused to repent of their thefts. So in essence, their heart was so hard that they had a hard time <coughs> opening up to in fact, hear God's word. In fact, Jesus told a man named Lazarus who was already in hell. He said, Lazarus, if I brought you out of hell and took you to your family and you witnessed to them about my mercy and about the horrors of hell, they still will not repent. I don't understand it. Brenda. That's true. You know, it's okay. Brenda said, idols don't ask anything of us. When you read Romans 12, we have a God that's asking a lot of us, doesn't he? <laughs> and these idols don't. That's a good point. Did I see another hand? Okay. Uh, let's look at Revelation chapter 16, verse 2. People took the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. Who's the beast? The Antichrist. The Antichrist put his image, a statue of himself, in the temple and he required everyone to worship him. Now, people do not accidentally take the mark of the beast. It will not be an accident. They will know exactly what they're doing and, and they will know that when they take the mark of the Antichrist or of the beast, they are saying they will be loyal to him and they reject God and Jesus Christ's work on the cross. It's not an accident. So that's number four, their idol worship. Number five, they would not, they uh, had physical and spiritual immorality. Physical, sex, orgies, all of that stuff will be rampant because it always is in a culture where they worship other gods and where they have witchcraft and demonology. S sexual immorality is unbelievable. Um, and spiritual immorality, which is worshiping other gods. Let's look at the verses there. All the nations, all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of Babylon's adulteries. What does that mean? They have drunk the wine of her maddening adulteries. They have become drunk again with paganism, with idolatry, with witchcraft, with demonology. They're drunk with it. The kings of the earth committed adultery with Babylon and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. So this is a very, very fallen city, isn't it? Sort of like accessories after the fact. What? Sort of like accessories after the fact. Accessories after the fact. Okay, when somebody does it and another somebody else follows and it's bad against the law of, of God, their accessories oh, okay. So they worship other gods and they become involved with it and bring other people involved in it. And they, okay. After the act. Yeah. Uh, Carol? There is no respect for other human life. There will not be respect, will there? You can see it right here, can't you? Thank you, Carol. Dorothy? Uh-huh. That's right. Okay. And she she is saying that the heart above the heart in man above all things is evil. Lyndon? I heard a preacher on the radio yesterday saying that 
we're not evil because we sin. We sin because we're evil. Okay, that's right. That's right. Thank you. And we're seeing it when, when the church is gone, we're seeing the evidence right here of what will happen. Let's do a few more real quickly. Uh, spiritism, that's necromancy. I think that's the way we say that. That's the uh, worship and the dealing with the dead. God says, do not, do not try to connect with the dead. That's what they're doing here. Demonology. With a mighty voice, an angel shouted, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. Look at the city of Babylon. She has become a dwelling for demons. Now, I would, you would be able to walk into that city and feel those demons, wouldn't you? It's a dwelling for the demons, a haunt for every impure spirit. It's like haunted with impure spirits. It was haunted with every unclean bird. When we read about birds in the scriptures, unless it's very... Specific birds generally indicate evil, evil spirits, a haunt of uh, unclean spirits, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. It's a very, very spiritually scary city. And finally, number seven, sorcery, black magic, witchcraft incantations. That's why I want us to be very careful with the books that are very popular today for children. What are those books on um, magic? Harry Potter. Potter. Harry Potter. You know those are really cool books, really fun to read, but we need to make sure that our kids understand that they this is not to be something we deal with. It is not something we even think about. Read it for fun and don't go any further than that. But you understand me? Yes, it does. We need to be really careful with the games we let our kids play, with the books they read. We need to be very careful. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. Look what happens when you get involved with that kind of stuff. Witchcraft and witches. You are led astray tells us right here. Now real quickly, I'm going to do real quickly, Babylon's doom. We're going to read, I've been giving you an overview of Babylon. Let's look at what happens to Babylon because I want to give you the outline so you can go home and study it. At the end of the tribulation and right before Jesus comes back, the city of Babylon will be destroyed by God in one day. Five, four plagues occurring in one day are listed. And this is what verse 8 says. Therefore, in one day, her plagues will overtake her. Death. Death will overtake Babylon. Mourning and famine because everything is going to be destroyed. And she will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. So it could sound like, you know, a lot of people before 1945 would have no idea how a whole city could be destroyed in one day. What happened in 1945? The atomic bomb in Helsinki, Japan. It was destroyed. We could have a city here destroyed in one day by some kind of bomb. And what comes from that? Death, mourning, famine, and consumed by fire. It was Hiroshima. Hiroshima. And Hels not Helsinki. That's Switzerland. That's Swi not, yeah. Where's Helsinki? Sweden? Finland. Finland. Well, I was pretty close. <laughs> What's the two cities again? Nagasaki. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay. Thank you for helping me because you know I'm not responsible for everything I say. <laughs> yes, I am. God does hold me responsible. Quickly, let me give you the outline. Go to your Bible and draw lines here between these sections. Outline of Revelation 18. I got three minutes. Yes. Uh, John heard four voices in this chapter. And they make four very important proclamations. And then he will see the actual destruction of Babylon. If you want to go read about 
a prophecy in Daniel, where would you go read in Daniel about the destruction of the nations of the earth? Daniel, uh, chapter 2. Oh, chapter 2. Chapter 2. The end of chapter 2. Go read it. Now, I'll read it to you later. All right. Chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3. We will hear with John the voice, one voice, of condemnation and judgment. So as you read Revelation 18 this week, read it with this understanding. That the first three th verses, we hear a voice of condemnation and judgment. Then verses 4 through 8. God calls for his people. And he says, leave, get out of here, get out of Babylon. Flee Babylon. Separate yourself. Because you will have the same death as the people in Babylon if you do not get out. Okay? That's verses 4 through 8. God is calling them to separate themselves from Babylon. Is that a, ver is that a message to us today? Yes. Absolutely. We are to separate ourselves from the things of Babylon in our world. We are to be separate from that. All right, verses 9 through 19. We hear the voice of lamentation. What is lamentation? Do you know? Marley, do you know what lament means? Do you know, Logan? Yes. What? It basically means mourning. Mourning, that's right. To cry, to be weeping, to be wailing. So there are voices of lamentation. There are three different groups that, that John tells us about who were lamenting this fall and destruction of Babylon. A lament by the government. All the kings of the world are standing looking at their TV seeing Babylon going up in flames. And oh, they're lamenting. That's the voice of the government, the kings. Secondly, we will hear the lament by the merchants, by the commercial world. All of their cargo is gone. There's no one left to buy it. Great Depression hits the whole world that day. The commercial world is, is lamenting. And furthermore, in letter C, we will hear the voice of lament by the maritime people, the trade. The commercial, the transportation, it's the, it's the ships and all of the captains and all of the people who are working on this ship tra with trade. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. J uh, Chase. Did you know that those very large cargo ships are actually only operated by a couple dozen people? No. Not nothing. On each ship? Yeah. The cargo ships, those massive, like... Massive. Big Chase is saying a massive cargo ship has probably 12 people on it taking care of it. Wow. Is that what you just said? Well, they will be lamenting. Not more than two dozen. Not more than two dozen. And four, the voice of celebration. Who would be celebrating to see Babylon going up in fire? Martyrs. Martyrs. People in heaven. Heaven is going to be celebrating. All of heaven is going to be celebrating. And finally, in verses 21 through 24, read about the destruction of Babylon. Now, I was going to have a video. Uh, a, 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 don't, don't hang up yet on me. <laughs> don't close up. I was going to have a video today of, Reve of uh, Revelation chapter 18 because now you have the outline. Now you know what it's about, right? So go home and YouTube Revelation 18. There's some great dramatizations of Revelation 18 and great reading. So be sure and read that. So you have homework this week. Don't tell anybody I assign homework in here. Some people actually don't come to my class because they say she gives homework. <laughs> and it's spring break. At your... If you want to and you really want to learn more about God's Word, Read Jeremiah 50 and 51 and listen to it on YouTube and Re Revelation 18. I'm going to pray. Ready? Let's pray. Whew. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that it is so interesting and so fun to read, sort of. But it's just so wonderful, Lord, that you're telling us what's going to happen.
But we don't have to be afraid. But you have a plan and you are going to take care of the evil in this world. And someday there will be no more mourning, no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain. Lord, I pray for everyone in this class today that they will draw closer to you. I pray for our children that they will want and have a hunger for your word. Lord, I pray that you will just draw them to you. Thank you for our new people today. Lord, we love them. We pray that they've been blessed. And I pray, Father, that you will bless the reading and the teaching of your word. And I pray for everyone's well-being in this class today. And it's in the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen.